You are listening and watching a very special podcast, Phenomenon Serendipity, and I'm your hostess, Catherine Donovan. Prepare for the most awesome point of view. All of the characters from Phenomenon Serendipity are awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Tilda Oxford. Tilda was getting prepared for her mission, but then she meets Irish accent Hermes. Hermes was a good friend of Angus Odysseus. Hermes started talking. When he was younger, there was something traumatizing that made him mute. But now, when he came across Tilda, he shows great respect, and also he talks for the first time. And Tilda comes across a girl who uses her violin and dances, but she also has a dark energy that comes from the violin when she is battling someone. This girl is Nivian. Nivian loved to dance and play violin. And Tilda was impressed with her skills and asked Nivian if she could be her violinist. Nivian accepted, and Hermes, who had a talent for drums, piano, and other percussions, he too helped out Tilda, and they were going to make Tilda's dream come to life. But first, Tilda had to go on her mission. She got herself prepared, and Lola was coming alongside her. Tilda and Lola went to this dark world, but what they saw there was horrifying. Giant destruction. It was hell. Tilda couldn't believe it. Oh my god. What kind of hell is this? She said. I don't know. Lola said, gasping. Suddenly, Lola was having painful flashbacks, and she began hypervailing. Tilda put her arms around her. Hey, hey, Lola, can you hear me? Take it easy. Take it easy, she said. Um, okay. Come on, let's move, Lola said. Tilda followed. But then there was some sort of commotion going on, and then Tilda decided to find out what it was. Lola, come on, this way, she said. They climbed up on the rooftop of a house, and Lola grabbed onto Tilda's hand, and Tilda flew. There were more masses of titans everywhere. Tilda could see a mass of people wearing green hoods. The hoods were down and they had swords in their hands, but they were being flung one by one. Tilda turned to Lola and said, Stay here. I'll be back, she said. Wait, what are you going to do? Lola called. I'm going to stop those giants, called Tilda and headed over to a big hill. She looked around, and there Tilda could see a mass of water in a lake. Perfect, she said. But wait, how am I going to get their attention? Then she had an idea. Lola was panicking as she ran on the rooftops. She was so scared that she was afraid of slipping. She almost did slip. She managed to hold on with dear life. But she was slipping and slipping, but she didn't want to die. Then she felt a shadow upon her. She turned around and she saw the giant looking down at her. Lola couldn't believe it. Oh, God. Oh, 
God, she gasped. The Titan reached over and grabbed her. Lola tried to struggle, but no matter how many times she tried to struggle, it was pointless. All of a sudden, just before the Titan could swallow her up, it suddenly froze and then it fell over, releasing Lola from her grip. Then she rolled on the ground. Then she looked at the giant, which was now dead. The back of the neck was sliced open. Toda couldn't believe it. Oh my god. Then she looked up to see who it was. Some guy with short hair, but there were curtain style bangs. It was more likely to be some sort of white, whitish blonde as it seemed. Yet she couldn't be sure. Both of his hands had two swords, and he went down. Somehow that gear he had around him was making him glide down to Lola. Lola began to squirm. No, please, don't hurt me. I didn't do anything, she said. Are you all right? The voice said. She looked up to see the figure. Um, yeah, I am, Lola said. I didn't mean anything. I swear, she begged. Hey, easy, easy. I'm not going to hurt you. Do you need any help? The guy said. Well, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just shocked. <laughs> well, at least I saved you in time from that titan, the guy said. Lola looked at him. Titan? That thing is a titan? Lola said. What, never seen one before? The guy said. No. Lola said. Jean, the guy, Jean, looked at her funny. Then he said, what's your name? He said, uh, Dolores Nikita. But, um, some people call me Lola. Or Lo, for some reason. <laughs> uh. But whatever you do, don't call me Lolly, please. Kind of a strange nickname, said the guy. Then he introduced himself. I'm John Kirstein. Kirstein? German, right? Lola asked. Well, yeah, <laughs> of course. Oh, nice to meet you. Lola said. You look tired, Jean said. It's nothing, really. It really isn't. But then, more giants were coming. Titans, if that guy assumed. Lola was so scared, but then Jean seized her, and they went up in the air and away from the titan. <sighs> I had enough of this killing for one day. You look like you took down a lot. I did, Jean said. But right now, I don't think I'm in the mood for this. Just then, something happened. The squad was filled with terror as they could see their comrades were being killed by the Titans. Only one was remaining calm. And he was about to attack when someone called out, Citizens! Hear me! It was Tilda calling from the hill. The soldiers stopped and they looked up. Then Tilda continued, Hear my voice! I'm here to deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Watch what I can do, 
she called out. Lola watched. Tilda, she said. John was amazed. What is she doing? He asked. Just then, two others came beside John. What's going on? said the dark-haired guy. I have no idea. Some girl said that she's going to deliver us from the hands from our enemies. Could she be referring to the Titans? John said. Oh boy, this is going to be something, said a girl with short wavy hair. I know Lola. I know she's watching, Tilda said to herself. Lola watched and she said, I know, Tilda. I know she can do it. I've seen what she could do, Lola said. Then she turned to the other two. Um, I guess you never introduced me to your friends or comrades, said Lola. Oh, they're from the MPs replied John. MPs, Lola said. The military police? John said. Never heard of them. Lola said. The guy with the dark hair looked at her. What, is she not from here? Has she even heard of the scouts or the military police? Said the guy. John shook his head. I don't think you want to get her upset, Norlo. Sean said to the dark-haired guy. What happened to her? The girl asked. She was attacked by a titan hitch. Sean said. Um, is she going to be okay? Hitch asked. Quiet, I can hear you. I'm trying to see what Tilda's doing, Lola said. The four of them watch, especially the other people in green. Even the guy with the stoic face watched. Tilda raised her hands up, and all of a sudden, the bodies of water came about. It was like a big mass wave coming down. The titans screeched. The other soldiers couldn't believe it. The captain of it was watching calmly. Lola began to tremble. Sit, she thought. How does she do that? Jean said. Nobody can do anything like that with the water. Marlow said. Hitch was shaken by this. I can't believe she can do that. Is this what you were referring to? Hitch said. Lola nodded. Yes, this is the one I've been talking about. Lola said. Tilda used the body of water and slosh it over the giants, the titans. And then the water was building up. Then Tilda freeze the water with the titans in it. And she just rammed into the ice. The ice broke apart and it was in pieces with the titans now obliterated. The soldiers just stood there. Tilda wiped her brows and saluted. Tilda Oxford, at your service, she said. The stoic captain looked over at her and said, Captain Levi, it's a pleasure to meet you, he said. Lola began to cheer. Yes! <laughs> Way to go, Tilda, she said. Come on, hurry, we gotta catch up, Lola said. Jean, Marlo, and Hitch were amazed, but then they heard Lola and followed. All right, that's the end of this podcast. See you next time. I'm Catherine Donovan. Bye-bye.